What is up everybody? Today I wanted to make the case for why you should consider switching off of WASD as a competitive player, or I guess just as someone that likes to customize things in general because you like to min-max. So first of all, I'll just say, let's just think about the fact that WASD is there by tradition. It's not there because really of any good reason. In, it came from the Half-Life menu in 1998, so for over 20 years, it's just been the tradition that in FPS games, WASD is the default moveset, and because they set that as sort of, I suppose, a culture leader in the space when keyboards, you know, became prevalent for movement, and, you know, we had the mouse as this separate thing for aiming, because it wasn't always the case. It was it used to be the case that the keyboard was for moving and for shooting and aiming, which is, you know, if we go back far enough. So it's just been there for 20 plus years. So so I think as competitive players, we should want to try to optimize things and try to think about how we can make the, these processes by which, you know, we're, we're trying to like actually select our weapons and our movement and our binds. We should be more intentional. So the case is essentially having access to more keys on the keyboard. Now, I actually don't typically use this keyboard, but I've been experimenting with it a little bit, by the way. This is the, the Razer Huntsman Mini V3 um, Pro, and it has snap tap. And I was like, oh, I really want to try snap tap. So I, I, that's why there's this mismatching cable. So yeah, don't judge me. All right. So the idea really here is that with WASD, you don't really have access to too much on the left side of the keyboard. Um, so that's, in my opinion, a problem. So in 2003, as a Quake player, I needed access to 20 to 25 keys uh, for movement, for keybinds, and for weapons. And so I was like, holy shit, this is really uncomfortable to press all of these binds. And so I wanted to have it be the case that I didn't also have to sacrifice my movement keys and, and make the, and my, my dodging to say, okay, well, shit, I got to like dodge in different ways to free up a finger so I can actually press this bind. And I was so heavy on the binds on the right side here of the keyboard that it just felt very clunky and awkward. And I had a friend at the time suggest to me, he's like, well, yo, dude, why do you even use WASD? I use RDFG. And I was like, yo, that is so wild. RDFG, it's crazy. Anyway, so he convinced me and I was like, all right, you've kind of convinced me, but obviously giving him a bit of resistance. I was like, I'll do ESDFG. I'll get, I'll meet you halfway. So I used ESDF and, uh, and that was really, really beneficial because of a few reasons. One, I had access to suddenly three extra keys on the left that were very easy for my ring finger to be able to hit. And because previously at WASD, you have Q, and then tab is usually used for the scoreboard, and caps lock is, you know, caps lock is caps lock. And and your ring finger isn't, I think, not going to often be used for like hitting one because, which is like kind of directly above, because it's kind of a stretch. And typically it's like more, more kind of chlorified because if that's or curled up because you're hitting the A key on Wazid. And so typically, I think for some people, they try to like, you know, try to use, do a mixture of the ring if they can and stretch it, or they use the, you know, their middle finger. And it obviously also depends on the size of your hands, the size of the keyboard, the size of the keycaps. So this is another reason why customizing things so it's comfortable makes sense because we will have different everything. And so I was like, all right, okay, well, what else is going to be a benefit? Well, another limitation I have, and I think a big one, is the is the pinky finger, the little finger. Because the little finger is actually really interesting because the, the little finger is not always going to be used, but it can be extremely valuable because it is in a completely different position because it's a lot shorter. And it's often in a situation where it's not set up for success because if we think about what people's pinky fingers are commonly going to be touching it's this shift key which is usually used for walk and possibly i guess you get the control key as well now the thing about the pinky is that because i think the tendon is like the same uh, for the ring finger if you move the pinky you can see the ring finger moves of its own just it just moves by itself basically because they're connected so that's kind of annoying so that's limiting as well as as the, the length and size of the, of the pinky and then another limitation is obviously this shift key, it's, it's fucking huge. It's the size of three keycaps put in one. That feels like a waste. But again, like we don't always necessarily have the ability to, you know, choose a keyboard that's going to, you know, be optimal in, in these senses. And so, you know, having the ability to work around it by just changing the keybinds is helpful, I think, I feel. So going over to ESDF, you're in a situation where, oh, suddenly now you can, you can hit the Z key. Like just going across one, you now have the Z key that you can hit. And for me, this has become my crouch button. And one of the, the reasons especially is because, and I've, you know, I've always had comments on how good my movement is in every game, is because I have this now for, for crouching. And then obviously for shift can be uh, utilized for walking. And then control can be used for basically anything. Um, it's not as comfortable a resting position as the Z is for me with ESDF. 
because you can see this is like a very comfortable position here with my hands um so i'm able to just like use that for crouch and that just opens this up to be anything now i usually use this as the melee because i don't want like it's kind of awkward and doesn't feel great to stretch my pinky because again of the connectedness of, of the tendon here so i don't want to you have to use it too much i want it to be in a relaxed position but having it on the crouch there's a lot of games that have crouch sliding and so you want to be able to have like freedom of, of movement with with uh, both the left and right keys whilst you are holding crouch so because of that it just feels super comfortable for me um, in terms of movement so that was a huge plus and then also my ring finger gained access and also my pinky can stretch so if i'm like trying to dodge i don't have to take my th my three fingers my index ring and and middle finger off of the movement keys and i can kind of like st stretch up to hit the a with my pinky if i really need to uh, but generally speaking i'll pick an opportunity in my dodging pattern to then like you know Oh, I'm, I'm dodging to the right. Okay, now my ring finger will be freed up to hit that A key or potentially hit the W or Q key as well. So I get these three extra keys, three extra keys on the left now, which also removes some of the burden from your uh, index finger that can reach pretty, pretty effectively across a lot of keys, as is the case for WASD as well. Now, so this is like really the main reason is the access to keys. And for me personally, it often feels, I don't have like very large hands. Um, so I need to have a more like customized setup to make if things feel more comfortable and to have access to more keys. And I don't really like to use the one, two, three, four, five keys because it really takes me kind of like far off. It's like a big stretch from, from my fingers personally to, to, to make the distance up there. So again, like just thinking about some of these situations and what feels comfortable or not in fights. And, you know, you because you don't really want to be in a situation where you are having to, because I, I wonder and, and comment, like leave this in the comments if, if you've experienced this. Have you experienced a case where you need to press a key bind, but to do so, it actually will interrupt the current dodging pattern that you're you're trying to have. Now, I will say that in Quake, this is particularly important because in Quake, your dodging patterns are extraordinarily important in a fight because what you're trying to often do is you're understanding the intervals of the opponent's reload times on their weapon and based off of that you understand that they want to in theory shoot their weapon as quickly as possible to maximize their dps against you however if you understand the reload timing you can lead them into thinking that oh they can predict a shot over towards this direction because you're currently moving to this direction but because you know precisely when they're able to fire you switch directions right at that moment and that causes them to miss so you know this is you know the dodging is like very very important in quake and you can really you can really mess with people and, and outperform people on dodging enormously, which is not really as present in a lot of other games. Um, however, you know, it, it is the case that I think it's still relevant to consider how does it impact my movement by having an uncomfortable you know keybind setup so with that said i'd love to hear your you know your guys thoughts on on keybinds do any of you have customized setups or any of you esdf or rdfg players or do you use something else entirely i would love to hear about your experience as well and uh, i hope this answers some of the questions because i get asked this question all the time people saying like what the hell are your keybinds why is everything customized kind of has to be because if i'm changing the, the default movement keys i literally have to then change everything else so that's kind of and i mean i will take i'll take the the fact that i use invert mouse i'll take that as as the weirdest thing that i do it used to be in fashion back when i began playing and you know, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. So anyway, I hope that this was interesting. Uh, let me know what you, th you guys think. And I'll catch you on the next one.